So, what's going on guys? I've been reflecting a lot lately as far as where I was when I started keto versus where I am now. And there are actually quite a few things very, very, very different. For someone new, or even for those of you that have been doing it for a while, I mean, drop your comments below, let me know what you think, or even, you know, if you got any tips for anybody else. And, you know, this is, this is like, an impressive community like I'm very very proud to be a part of it. you do have some people that attack others but then you know you have about 80 to 90 percent of you guys that you're just out there to help and that's what makes it wonderful so on to programming what we're gonna talk about now is keto now for me versus well then yeah that's what I'm gonna say now the funny thing is how I used to eat when I first started keto like uh, <laughs> it was uh it was all off it was very typical of a beginner uh that's why you know when i hear most people doing keto and you know i hear them doing it and i'm just like ah that's that's so wrong but i get it like i understand the only problem is like some of them just tend to be kind of ignorant which is bad but you know it is what it is i was a uh, chicken breast chicken tender topped with cheese and bacon kind of guy I would have like I would have like my broccoli on the side and I would put a little butter in there, not a lot, just you know, just a little bit. And then maybe some cheese on it. Maybe some cheese. So every once in a while I do a little cheese dip. But to be honest, most of it was very it was high protein, low fat, and low carbohydrate. The initial woo wah and ha ha of keto I didn't receive for a long, long, long time. And I mean, of course I thought I was right. You know what I'm saying? Of course I thought I was right. I mean, who doesn't, you know? Well, I'm not gonna say I was right. I, I just, I assumed, I, I thought I was right at the time because I assumed that's how the diet was done. I mean, I didn't know any better. To me, I mean, it was higher, it was higher fat, but it wasn't a high fat diet at all. I recently just had my first little coaching client. Um, that's not something I do on a normal basis, but it's the first person that actually came to me with, with help and wanted to actually do the keto diet. And that's why you saw Renee in the video from the keto con review. I'll put that below for you guys as well. So helping her in the process, it really brought me full circle to remember what I thought I knew versus what I do know and what I've experienced. And the funny thing about keto is everybody experiences very, very differently. So when I finally entered into, enter in ketosis for the first time, my fats were like, whoa, they were high like they were supposed to be, but they just, it got me to the point where it, sometimes I would feel a little sick, like I didn't want to eat, and I would always be, you know, I would be super, 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 super full. But when I started helping someone, she had completely different symptoms than I first had. They were, they were still textbook symptoms. Some of them were. And I was able to get her through it, get her into ketosis, and she's been there right now, and she tends to love it. I'm going to finish the part of when I, what I used to eat back then, and then I'm going to transfer to what I eat now because what I ate back then is going to be changed very dr drastically because of someone I met. And by the way, if you guys really want to know, like dig deeper as far as how I started everything, I do have a whole video of me explaining how I got here, how I started keto, all that stuff called my weight loss journey. And I'll link that below for you as well. All right, so how I eat now, to be honest, my style of eating is very close to carnivore. But oddly enough, I will occasionally have like a potato. There was point where there was one point in time I would have a slice of sprouted grain bread that I would get from Trader Joe's. I'll, I'll still have broccoli. I'll still have cauliflower here and there. It, it it really varies, but what it comes down to is when I just want some other flavor. When I just want the taste of broccoli and cheese or broccoli and butter. Well, I just want cauliflower or maybe like the cauliflower hash browns I made. I don't go to vegetables for nutrition. Now, I'm not saying they don't have them, but that's just not something I do, mainly because vegetables just don't sit well with my stomach. Sometimes I'll do a potato just uh, on workout days for the extra carbohydrates. But to be honest, I can't say I notice a difference in the gym when I do a potato versus when I may do broccoli that particular day. <laughs> when it comes to when I eat meat, I don't do chicken breast very often. For some reason, chicken gives me a terrible headache when I eat it. My go-to food is beef. I do a lot of beef and a lot of salmon. <laughs> I do a lot of both of those things. So I do eat chicken eggs. I don't, 
I don't know if you want to classify those as meat as I mean, meat as well, but I mean, I guess it is. So I do ground beef, ribeye steaks, pulled beef, which comes from ground chuck roast, beef liver. I'll do a beef sausage every once in a while. And I do do pork occasionally. I don't do pork as nearly often as I do beef, but I will do a pork chop here and there. And I make sure that it has a nice rim of fat going around it. And that's marbled nicely or marble the best that they have anyway. I'll do a pork shoulder or a pulled pork. That's um, something that's uh, high in fat cut as well. And I definitely do bacon every once in a while. When I get some bacon, I look forward to it. Oh yeah, yeah, I sure do. I do. Bacon, you, me, in my mouth. Ah, today. My protein isn't very high. My protein, my protein tops out between about 85 to 100 grams a day. My fat is extra high. I, oh, I, I keep my fat high, keep my fat high, but I don't do, I might, I may do maybe about a hundred and I'll say a hundred to anywhere between a hundred to 150 grams of fat a day. Now that's a wide range, but you know, I don't eat the same thing every single day because you know, days like particularly like now when I'm recording a video, I just made a recipe. Look out for that. But I just made a recipe using a gr um, granola for the crust for a cheesecake. Crispy. So for days like that, my fat and my carbs and my calories tend to be a little higher because I gotta taste it. But on to one of the biggest things I have taken away from keto, and that is Stephanie Keto Person is very right. Now, over the years, I mean, it's been what, three, four years I've been doing keto. I think four, to be honest, I think, I think it might be four or five. You know, you know, when, once you become adult, I swear, it's not like being in high school. It's just like time just goes and you don't even know where you at. You just, <laughs> you just wiggle one day and you be 40 years old, like, what? But Stephanie was always right. So when I first started keto, I didn't know where I was going. I didn't, I didn't really know what I was doing. And I recognized that, you know, I didn't feel the euphoria, like what's going on? So. Back in the day, when you typed in keto, Stephanie came up. Not Keto Connect, not Thomas Delauer, Stephanie. She's getting close to it. Why she's not at 100K right now? Let's just, the same reason I'm I don't agree with, I don't, I don't agree with every single thing she says, but I know I agree with 85 to 90% because I've lived it. I've lived different type. I've lived, I've lived different types of keto: the lazy keto, the dirty keto, like the right keto. I've lived keto so many different types of ways, and I say, I swear to you, I felt the best always when I follow her regimen. The lady knows what she's talking about. You know, I'm a recipe guy. I mean, and I work out. I like going to the gym. I like to do the bodybuilding thing. I like to. I like to look nice with my shirt off. If you got my cookbook, you know. <laughs> You already know, cause you've seen it. But I, I know you've seen it. And that's that's another that's another thing that I've learned with keto. So you have like these freaks of natures of people, you know, that they just eat trashy food and all that kind of stuff, and they just look mind-blowingly amazing. And I've definitely accepted that I'm not one of those people. I know that for me to look my best, I have to work out hard in the gym. I know that I have to watch my calorie intake. I know I have to watch my macronutrients to look my best and to be super fit 20, 24, 365 days a year isn't sustainable long time because there's gonna come moments throughout the year that I just wanna relax. There's gonna come moments throughout the year that I make a dessert and I just think it's wonderful and I just wanna keep eating it. There's gonna come times when I, I put something on the, on the barbecue and I think it's delicious and I just go ham on my protein that, that day. You know, so it's just not sustainable for me for to look perfectly fit the entire year. And I've, I've, I've come to acceptance of that. You know, I mean, after seeing Jason Momoa, he was all over social media because he was relaxed on vacation or whatever. He wasn't in Aquaman body shape style. And I was like, hey, you know what, brother? I don't, I get it. I get it. You can look great, but you do it when you have to because it's just like, you know, when you're cutting calories, man, it's just, I mean, you can't enjoy life like that. You gotta stay in the house. Because there's temptations all over the place. Especially now with keto being as big as it is. You know, keto, when I first started, keto had hardly nothing out there. Like, 
when I first started, keto was, we might have had fat snacks. Maybe we may have had, I don't think they, I don't think they had fat snacks when I first, first started keto. Or it was like, the, every now everybody was small. When I say everybody was small, I don't know what, everybody was itty bitty people like, there was no Lakanto, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, everybody was really, really small. I think there was Fat Snacks, um, Nui was out, that was like keto cookie. Like, all these things you had to order. Grappau was out. Grappau was, well, I don't think Grappau was out when I first started. But after I started Sugarless Crystals, Grappau was out. So, Grappau was small back then, too. We didn't have much. All these pre-mixes and stuff like that, like, you know. Nah, we didn't have none of those things. And we had nowhere near as many food bloggers that we have. I mean, I, jo I mean, I joined the race, I did. Like the resources we have now are like amazing. So when people ask me certain things, they're like, do you ever have a cheat day? I'm like, I don't have to have a cheat day to leave ketosis. I have a cheat day when I'm not paying attention to my nutritional input. Meaning, I'm gonna get some keto and cold brownies. I'm gonna get some Grappal granola. I'm gonna get some high key fat snickerdoodle cookies. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm definitely gonna get those because <clears throat> I'm not gonna care. No, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna care much about my nutrition. I just want flavor, and keto allows me to still do that. It's been hundreds of days since I had an Oreo. <laughs> I mean, I still look at them when I go through the store. And I think about the days we used to have. You know, I get a new pack, you know what I'm saying? I I spy in the grocery store and I'm like, yo, I see you. I see you. And then I I purchase the pack and you know I hop in the car and pull it back and I can smell the whatever, whatever that particular new flavor was and I just go to town. I would eat like somebody was trying to steal it from me. But, I mean, I'm good now. <laughs> I'm absolutely fine. Like, at the time, at one time, I thought the best keto cookie I would ever have would be something I made. And then I went to KetoCon and had high key snacks. It blew me away. And I will put that KetoCon video down and you can see high key snacks and you can get all the, the discount codes and affiliate links and I'm, I'm now affiliate with Lakanto. After all these years of pushing monk fruit, I'm actually an affiliate with, Con with Lakanto. But where I see keto going, um, it makes me nervous. It makes me very, very nervous. Because you see things like Truly, and then you see things like some of the, the gimmicky MCT oil things and the fat bombs. <sighs> And then the ice creams marketed to keto people, not Rebel, not um, not Mammoth, and not Killaway, because those are for keto. But you know, like Enlighten and Halo Top. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying they're terrible because I still do it myself. I just see these things and I'm like, oh man, it's so tainted. You know, some you know someone was asking me the other day, can I have Truly on keto? And I said, well, technically, if you look at the nutrition facts, yeah, but alcohol is going to kick you out of ketosis temporarily and how long it takes you to get back in there is going to vary when it comes to how keto adapted you were but if you're just starting out i mean you're kind of putting yourself shooting yourself in the foot like you're really putting yourself back at day one but somebody that's new is not going to know that because they're focusing so much on 20 grams net carbs and net carbs meaning you know they can have a four or five gram net carb truly if they want throughout the night matter of fact i can just not eat carbs all day and i can have four of them you know so that's dangerous in itself now real good foods i do that cauliflower crust but i don't do their um i don't do any of the other stuff like because they use sunflower oil and they use canola oil and i'm a big no-no when it comes to vegetable oils now which is the main reason i really stopped eating oreos it definitely wasn't the sugar they had reached out to me and i was just like man i i always wanted to work with you guys but now I can't because I just, I don't stand by your product. I don't stand by your ingredients. And that's something I'll never do on my channel. That's something I'll never do on my website. If I post anything is, even if I like it or don't like it, I think it's a good product. And I think we should have stronger products like that out there now. 
I knew I wasn't gonna see Stephanie at KetoCon because because I, I know she hates what keto has become. And as much as respect as I have for her, some of my recipes I know she would not like. I know she, you know, her, her favorite, like, that's not keto, okay? And everything, everything that I eat isn't perfect. There's always residual cost to everything. There's always gonna be residual cost to everything. It just makes the diet sustainable. And it makes me happy. Like, I see no problem with rewarding myself with a snack every once in a while. Because I definitely have a video coming out for that. Because these people have been getting on my nerves bad. But I'm gonna go ahead and end this video because I got recipes to do. I got videos to record. I'm, I'm, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere, trust me. I'm not gonna post as much on YouTube right now because I'm overhauling and I'm doing some serious stuff with my website and that's my main focus. My main focus is my website over YouTube now. And that's just, that's just how it is. But I'm, I'm not going anywhere. No, wor no worries about that. <laughs> I just gotta get some stuff ready for the website because I'm definitely, as far as my personal life goes, I'm trying to have some things together next year for me to possibly to, to maybe leave the country. I don't know yet. That's my main goal right now and to continue to make these fire recipes I keep dropping on them.